Almost every culture and myth talks about the existence of huge giants. Even though the appearance and the terms used to identify them may change, they all agree to the fact that they are human-like and extremely huge beings. It's difficult to agree that the presence of such huge beings and the similarities on their appearance in every culture just as a mere coincidence, and it gets us to question if giants really roamed the face of the earth. The Hebrew Bible also talk about the giants, and in it, they are referred to as Nephilim. As for the book of Enoch, God sent a group of angels called the Watchers to watch over humans. Instead, the Watchers began to lust for human women and took them as their wives. The offspring of these unions are the Nephilim, savage giants who pillage the earth and endanger humanity. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 to 4 it is written, When human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. As for the book of Enoch, the God was angered by the destruction and evil the Nephilim spread across humanity. So God decided to eradicate them from the face of the earth. This is the reason for the great flood mentioned in Genesis, in which Noah and his ark makes the appearance. Many are inclined to believe that the Great Flood is real, but not the existence of Nephilim. It could be seen, some try to emphasize giants as just a myth, but the many evidence found and exposed by archaeologists would say otherwise. There was a time when the existence of giants were openly admitted. Many newspapers reported about unearthing enormous skeletons and bones, and produced them as solid evidence for the existence of giants. On February 11, 1902, New York Times reported, owing to the discovery of the remains of a race of giants in Guadalupe, NM, antiquarians and archaeologists are preparing an expedition further to explore that region. This determination is based on the excitement that exists among the people of the scope of country near Mesa Rico, about 200 miles southeast of Las Vegas, where an old burial ground has been discovered that has yielded skeletons of enormous size. Luciana Quintana, on whose ranch the ancient burial plot is located, discovered two stones that bore curious inscriptions, and beneath these were found in shallow excavations the bones of a frame that could not have been less than 12 feet in length. The men who opened the grave say the forearm was four feet long, and that in a well-preserved jaw, the lower teeth ranged from the size of a hickory nut to that of the largest walnut in size. The chest of the being is reported as having a circumference of seven feet. Quintana, who has uncovered many other burial places, expressed the opinion that perhaps thousands of skeleton of a race of giants long extinct will be found. This supposition is based on the traditions handed down from the early Spanish invasion that have detailed knowledge of the existence of race of giants that inhabited the plains of what now is eastern New Mexico. Indian legends and carvings also in the same section indicate the existence of such a race. In another article in the 4th of May 1908, New York Times reported, Charles C. Clapp, who has recently returned from Mexico, where he has been in charge of Thomas W. Lawson's mining interest, has called the attention of Professor Agassiz to a remarkable discovery made by him. He found in Mexico a cave containing some 200 skeletons of men each above 8 feet in height. The cave was evidently the burial place of a race of giants who antedated the Aztecs. Mr. Clapp arranged the bones of one of these skeletons and found the total length to be 8 feet 11 inches. The femur reached up to his thigh and the molars were big enough to crack a coconut. The head measured 18 inches from front to back these articles are mentioned along with the main news section, and New York Times is a well-reputed newspaper, so it is unrealistic to believe that these reports as just pranks.
1890, a French anthropologist Georges Vaucca de la Pouge found three very large human bone fragments in the Bronze Age cemetery of Castelnaulalès in France. He estimated from the bone size that the human may have been about 11 feet tall. He published these findings in the journal La Nature by naming the bone remains as Giant of Castelnau. In the journal he describes, I think it unnecessary to note that these bones are undeniably human, despite their enormous size. The first is the middle part of the shaft of a femur, 14 centimeters length, almost cylindrical in shape, and the circumference of the bone is 16 centimeters. The second piece is the middle and upper part of the shaft of a tibia. The circumference is 13 centimeters at the nutrient foramen. The length of fragment is 26 centimeters. The third, very singular, was regarded by good anatomists as the lower part of a humerus. The volumes of the bones were more than double the normal pieces to which they correspond. Judging by the usual intervals of anatomical points, they also involve lengths almost double. The subject would have been a likely size of 3 meters. Regardless of this being a very important discovery, after 1892, no peer has reviewed de Lapoux's paper or done an analysis on the bones. Another giant bone discovery was done by the Peterson brothers on Lake Lawn Farm in southwest Wisconsin. These skeletons have a height ranging from 7 feet to 10 feet, but a prominent feature among them was that they displayed unexpected features. These features are as a double row of teeth, six fingers, six toes, the teeth in the front of the jaw are regular molars, etc. On the 4th of May 1912, the New York Times reported this news as the discovery of several skeletons of human beings while excavating a mound at Lake Delavan indicates that a heretofore unknown race of men once inhabited southern Wisconsin. Information of the discovery was brought to Madison today by Maurice Morrissey of Del Evan, who came here to attend a meeting of the Republican State Central Committee. Curator Charles E. Brown of the State Historical Museum will investigate the discoveries within a few days. Upon opening one large mound at Lake Lawn Farm, 18 skeletons were discovered by the Phillips brothers. The heads, presumably those of men, re much larger than the heads of any race which inhabit America today. From directly over the eye sockets, head slopes straight back and the nasal bones protrude far above the cheekbones. The jaw bones are long and pointed, bearing a minute resemblance to the head of the monkey. The teeth in the front jaw are regular molars. There were also found in the mounds the skeletons, presumably of women, which had smaller heads, but were similar in facial characteristics. The skeletons were embedded in charcoal and covered over with layers of baked clay to shed water from the sepulcher. After this article, no more reports on the finding could be seen. On October 7, 1895, the World Newspaper reported a find near San Diego of a giant Indian mummy more than eight feet tall. This mummy was named the San Diego Giant. The news soon spread, and many other newspapers also started to report about the mummy with a clear picture of it. The skeleton was examined by many scientists and curators and validated it to be of an enormous humanoid being. The skeleton was then sold to Smithsonian's. Afterwards, a piece of the giant's dried skin was removed and tested. They concluded the mummy to be a fake, claiming the skin to be made out of gelatin. The Paiute Indians, a Native American tribe that settled near what is now southeastern Nevada in the U.S., talks about a race of red-haired enormous beings in their stories. They call them the Saitiika. They were cannibalistic giants who killed and ate the Paiute tribe's people. As for the tribe tales, the giants were a great threat to the Paiute Indians, even though their number is small. The tribe has fought against these giants and has managed to trap them in the Lovelock Cave. When the giants refused to come out, the Paiutes piled bushes before the cave mouth and set it aflame. The Saitiika were annihilated. Miners, who mined guano, which is an ingredient used in gunpowder, 
were mining Lovelock Cave proved, this tale is not a mere story. These miners found ancient relics and quickly notified the authorities on the findings. The archaeologists found woven cloth, tools, and 12-foot-tall red-haired mummies among the artifacts. These artifacts could be seen around many museums, but not the mummies. This leads to the assumption the authorities are trying to hide the existence of giants from public. So there is a fair debate, as if the San Diego giant is also not a hoax. Western world is not the only place the evidence for the existence of giants were found. The Goliath's footprint in South Africa is another solid proof for the existence of giants. The foot imprint is clearly visible. Regardless of this being so obvious, some scientists call it be a work of erosion and not a footprint of a giant. The print is 1.2 meters long, so it is assumed the giant whom the print belonged to might be a being who is 24 to 27 feet tall. Several other footprints that were extravagantly large were found in other parts of the globe, such as China, California, Tanzania, Sri Lanka, and much more. The Naramitsu Odachi, which is a giant Japanese samurai sword, is also considered as an evidence for the existence of giants. The Naramitsu Odachi is a 3.77 meter long sword that weighs approximately 15 kilograms. An Odachi normally has a length of 165 to 175 centimeters, revealing the oversized Naramitsu Odachi to be 2.2 times larger than the average human-sized Odachi. Some view this just as a craft, but others believe the sword was actually used by a giant. Considering the size of it, the height of the samurai who carried it is probably about 13 feet tall. Because no archaeologist was able to unearth a skeleton of this size, or at least haven't revealed to the public of such discovery, many argue the sword is just a monument, and not one that is owned by a warrior. Even though at first, the news of unearthing giants were frequently reported, there appears to be a sudden disappearance of such news, and even archaeologists does not seem to show any interest in reviewing the findings that were already being published. This shows a deliberate attempt to hide the facts that would justify the existence of giants. It is not a mystery that dinosaurs roamed the earth, so it's reasonable to think that giants did too. It could be assumed that most of this evidence has been suppressed by the scientific community because it does not fit in with the evolutionary narrative that we were told. The attempt to make such realistic creatures as just a myth, when they even has left behind such solid and obvious evidence for their existence, makes us question if other legends that are told to be just legends actually are true. The important question to ask may be, if there are giants still roaming the face of the earth? The answer might probably be yes. Because the science community shows no interest whatsoever to find out about the existence of giants, we might have to solely depend on eyewitnesses. And of course, there are a considerable amount of sightings of giants. The most significant of those is the giant in Afghanistan. It is said, the US military men encountered a giant red-headed beast along a goat path near a cave in rural Afghanistan. None of the authorities officially confirmed the encounter and has made sure to make it look as an urban legend. It is said, once a group of US military men went missing, so a search troop was set out to find them. The search troop then came across a cave and from it emerged a red-headed giant of about 18 feet tall with a gigantic spear. Immediately the giant pierced through one of the soldiers killing him on the spot. But somehow the military men have managed to kill the giant with the help of many bullets. Inside the cave, the search troop has found many human skeletons and broken military equipment. So they assumed the giant is cannibalistic and the military men that went missing were unfortunate victims of the giant. The dead body of the giant was then transported to a secret facility in US for further examination, but as expected, these results never got out. Let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments. Please consider to like and subscribe to help out the channel.
My Patreon and subscribers, thank you so much for your support, and I value it so much. I hope to see you again in another story to tell.